Okay, here goes. Today, we're drawing ourselves an LSD bird. Hi, people. Today, we're drawing a weird ass bird. I've done one of these before and I call it my LSD bird and so what you uh, what you're actually doing when you're drawing this bird is you're gonna make it it's gonna be hairy feathery and looks like it belongs in a Dr. Seuss book and so all I'm doing here is uh, this is this is the back of the part that that is right where your beak would normally be. And so the beak is just going to be this long pointed little beak that we're going to make this bright yellow color. But I don't like to work with the 10 so much. 10 is too small, so let's work with the 50. And I'm not even sure I really like that color. Hi, people. Today, as I was saying earlier, is we're going to draw a funky, weird bird. And so what you're looking at here is the bird's beak. We're just going to blend these colors together just to give it the, the feeling of this, this beak. And then right here, we're going to put an eye. Now, because this eye is just going to be a circle, let's get it to fill in with a really unique off-color brown like that. And so we're going to put a great big eye. right there and then we're going to fill it in with the brown so we're getting to this color here let's put it into about that color so okay so we fill that with brown so that's the start of his eye and then you put another oval on top of that and this one we're going to fill in Let's go back up to the top here, make it black. Hi, Deb. Thanks for tuning in to my live painting program. I'm just, uh, I've been doing this for a couple days now, and it's, it's so much fun because I see all these old students of mine and people I haven't talked to in a long time. It gives me a chance to catch up, find out what's going on, and allows people to post messages and stuff like that. So I appreciate the hi from you. It kind of makes me feel like I'm back in my classroom. This is my, that one I'm going to fill with black. And then I'm going to put a little uh, little color over top of that once I fill it in with black. Sorry, a little white over top of that to give it the... So now we're starting to see a little bit of an eye there. So it's uh, this is going to be very cartoony type of drawing. And so you can see how the eye is starting to form. And then this is the beak. And so just using the, uh, the 10 or so and going back to white, I'm going to just put a little white highlight on there. So it looks like an eye and it gives it anytime you're trying to uh, Anytime you're trying to bring a Character to life these uh, 
these little dots when you put them on the, on the face automatically give it a, a little bit of a character and a little bit of a feeling to it so and Deb yes it has been a very long time so but we don't want to discuss that because it makes me feel old but I do like the fact that you're commenting so I hope more people comment because it makes it makes these sessions a lot funner <laughs> I still have a painting I did in my eighth grade A class. I think I kept it because I was so shocked and did something so remotely artistic. I have to watch more of these videos to grow my talent. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I always believe that everybody has talent. All you have to do is practice. It always makes me funny that some people say, oh, I have no artistic talent. It's not, uh, it's not something that comes naturally. You have to work at it. Like anything else, you just keep working and working until you get it right. And then when you get it right, then you know you're on the right path. So what are we going to do for, oh, what's going on here? Nothing smudging or anything. So let's uh, combine all this with the background and see if that helps. Oh, there we go. So let's zoom back in there and see if I can play a little bit more now. There we go. Got my smudge tool. So this is this is going to be the edge of this guy's beak, which it's going to have a couple different colors swirled into it to give it the pattern. And um, like I said with all the other ones, there's no right or wrong with any of this stuff. And so when you're doing one of these, the whole idea is just to be as creative as you want and just pull the colors and pull the, the different things so you just sort of have like so you can see this start sort of starts to look like a beak on this guy's and let's go with that you know those parrot beaks that have kind of an overhang there you go so you see how it has a little bit of the overhang over top just because I pulled it that way and so that now we're we're just starting to get a little bit of shape so then this is going to be the head of so you can see the way the eye is set up and how the eye is so so pretty just the way it is and then now really quickly what i do now is i start to build the rest of the bird and so we're going to have him um let's have him sitting on a log so i'm going to put a big brown log in here real fast just to give us some perspective on what we're working on so i want a hundred dollar a hundred uh, size hundred excuse me and then this is going to be the log that he's sitting on So and to make that log work, we're going to put some uh, different colors in there too, just to get it some different colors. Oh yeah, you always have to have pink in your log for some reason. How about this brown? This brown right over top of it would be nice too. And then a little bit more of this in here. Okay, and then from that, we're going to take, you see this color here? We want that color to be repeated in his feet. So his feet are just going to be like these claw things that sort of hang onto here. So we're just going to pull it across like this. So there's just these great big heavy duty feet that are going to be part of his body and you don't see it yet but you'll understand here in a second so this is his feet just hanging off the page and in order to make that look a little bit better let's put a 10 and use a little bit of a black or some dark darker highlight in there so let's use maybe this color to highlight his feet a little bit and give it a little bit more distinction and then I'll pull I'll pull some of this to to give it the claws and all that other stuff. We should have really uh, long white claws on it, or real long, or grayish claws. So let's go with gray, gray like this, and we'll pull these claws right in here that I'll uh, 
I'll draw with a little bit more detail later. Okay, so that is the general idea of the way my bird's going to look. Then we want his head. <clears throat> we want his head to be shaped. And a funny little shape like this. So this is going to be his head. And then we're going to put his body that'll come all the way down like this onto here. And let's bring this in. And then he'll have a, the hump of his body will come back like this. And then he'll have a piece of his body going down here. So that's a general idea or the general shape of the way you want it to look. Mr. Korczynski is here. Another guy I haven't seen in years and years and years. So now all I need to do is I need to just start adding some colors that I can then pull in order to give it the feel and the design that you're hoping you end up with in the end. So some of these different colors that I'm putting in here, I'll just start to pull in a second to give it the pattern and give it a little bit of a cool little shape. So let's put in some real cool blues, a little real cool blues down here in his tails. Purples, yeah, I like the purple. And here, underside of his chin, let's darken that up a little bit. Um, let's make a portion of his head in a grayish color. Uh, but not so much gray as in a light color like that. Put a little bit more of that here. Some darker brown in. So give it that feel. So can't you just feel that bird just starting to come together? You're looking, I bet you're all looking at it and saying, oh, this looks like it's something that you'd find in a, an elementary school drawing. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. But that's the coolest thing about working this, this way is that all of this stuff starts to make sense in a second. I just start to pull some of these colors together and you end up with a real cool effect. And so this is a, a type of drawing I've been doing for a little while here. And uh, the thing that I like the most about it is that it never allows me to do the same painting twice. And so I spend a lot of time pulling, using a smudge tool. Once you get all your colors on here, you start to pull it, use a smudge tool to pull colors in different directions and to give it some of the shape and the, the effect, which you'll make a, will make a little bit more sense as we get a little bit further into this and I keep adding the colors. So we want a little bit more orange into the, the claws. Let's put some orange in here. Um, a little bit of a loop in there. Um, I kind of like this off color fuchsia, a little bit more purple, the skin color fit nicely into some of this areas in here, and up here, and then let's put a little bit of brown right in here because you know he's got to have a little bit of a brown on the top of his head. What would a bird look like if it didn't have some brown on his head? Some darker black in here. A little bit of black. Let's put a black in this joint right here to bring it out. Bring out some of the colors in here as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to smudge in order to create the body of the, the animal. So you notice I spent a fair amount of time Those are all brush strokes. I didn't want those. I want to go with this one. And I want it to be 100. So now we're now what you do is you take all of these colors and you start to mix them together. And pull some of these uh, colors to give it. And again, remember what I said, there's very few things that you can do here that would be wrong. So So 
all I'm doing is, again, just pulling the colors to fill in the whole space to start creating my LSD bird. Now, I've never done LSD, but I have a feeling um, it would make you feel the way this bird looks because it is a hallucinogenic drug from what I was told. And it makes things psychedelic. And so that's where this psychedelic bird comes in. And all of this, well, the blue outline we want to get rid of, of course, because you just, you don't want the blue to be the, the pattern. This is part of the bird down here, so you want this to be the same kind of wild uh, blending of the colors to show it's still part of the bird. And you blend it all together. So now, this this is what you want for the body of the bird. All I'm trying to do here is just blend some of these colors together. You can see the nice little beak there. You can see the pink and the, the different colors just sort of taking precedence over different areas on the body. And starting to fill in the spaces. So when you, uh, when you grab some of the paint, so that you see this blue, I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to pull it. In and you can see you can decide that okay I'd like the blue to be a little bit dominant in that space and all I did was take that one little dot of blue and then start to pull it around to give it a little bit of a, a texture feeling and so this is a darker emphasis on the shoulder area of, of this bird so that I'm just going to make it be a little bit more dominant and fill in the space this spot here needs to have some of the some more of the blue in here. And all I'm doing is trying to get rid of some of the, the white areas because you don't want too much of it to be white. Although the white does give it a, it almost looks like a, a crinkled up piece of paper bird when you're done. And so this is going to be my stump. So I want this to, to start to create a stump feel to it. And in order for that to happen, I got to pull some of these colors down so it becomes a stick that this bird is actually sitting on. Thanks, Deb. So now as I pull this, this stick down and continue to create the log itself, you want the color to sort of run all the way through it. And so it looks like a, just a, a single stick as it comes down that the bird is sitting on. And then I'm going to zoom in here in a second and, and create his claws and his paws. And then I'll show you how you, you make this bird a little hairy. So it looks a little bit more prehistoric than what it does now. Okay, so let's zoom in here. Where's my magnifying glass? Okay, so the goal now is to create these areas here and make them look like claws. And some of that is going to be hard to do if we don't have the colors all the way in there. So the colors you want to have
so again I'm just you sort of fly by the seat of your pants here there really isn't any right or wrong way to do this stuff it's just pulling the stuff so he starts to have a little bit of a, a claw shape object on his on his body and so we're gonna have his leg it's gonna go up into his body in here someplace and so you create this pattern like this and pull these claws down Just clawed down and sitting on the wood hooking around hooking around okay and then we're gonna take a little bit of the the gray and I'm gonna draw with the gray to put a A little bit more gray in here. And you want these to stand out, so as I as I'm drawing this prehistoric bird's claws in here. You want to add a little bit of darker colors. So you start to see some of the the claws of the animal. This is one bird you don't want to meet in a dark alley. Okay, and again, the, the greatest thing about all of this is that because because there's no right or wrong ways to do this, and it's just the way you, you smudge the colors together and pull them, it will give you a, a cool little outline and give you a cool feeling to some of the stuff you're trying to create. And so you can see how I've taken the, the gray and sort of have smudged it to, to create a little bit more of the paw. And again, if I don't like something, like let's say I pull this and I go, oh, that's wrong. You just go up here and go to undo, and it just takes the stuff off that you've done wrong. And so that's why I say there's really nothing you can do that's wrong or right, because you just continue to pull and continue to pull all these different colors together and create the whatever effect you're trying to achieve so this is starting to become the the claws of the prehistoric bird we got a little carried away on the I'm going to a smaller circle so I can be a little bit more exact on it Sometimes when I'm drawing, and I, I always tell people that as I'm drawing, what I'm doing is I'm, when I when I'm doing these, I tend to relax, and it's a method of me um, just deprogramming myself or having a a time at the end of the day that just allows me to take a few seconds and. It's very similar to reading a book or watching a TV show for me. And so there's not a lot of thought process going on. You sort of just make things happen and just try to create the, the feeling in the bird or in the work that you're doing and then sort of lose yourself in the, in the drawing program. And so every once in a while you'll notice that as I'm drawing, I'll quit talking. Um, and that's just because I've sort of, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and, and, uh, trying to create a certain effect and and when it doesn't work out exactly the way I want then it it tends to I tend to try to refocus okay, it's starting to look a little bit more like a claw which is good pull it up into here 
Okay, and then now what I'm going to try to do is I'm back to a smaller um, smudge, so the circle's not as big. And now what you can do is you can start to put some of the, the interesting textures in this thing. So this is going to be the top part that flows along the edge of his beak. And in here, he has to have, and what I'm going to do here is cheat a little bit because I needed a black in there and I don't want to pull out my paint color again. So what I did is I just pulled some black from the edge in there. And then I'm going to try to create, you know how the, on the bird's beaks a lot of time they have a little um, black area that they... That, um, I don't even know if it's a nostril on birds where it has that little black area on the, the, the beak of the bird. Well, there you go. This one has one now. And again, all I'm doing is playing and trying to bring in a little bit of feeling to the drawing and to the bird's beak. starting to refine some of these colors so you see how um, you want to pull them up and fill in some of the white areas but because now I'm working with a smaller um, pull tool I can give it a little bit more of a, a cleaner blend than with a smaller one Just, I'm just going to continue to build this uh, this feeling of the the hair or the the fuzz on this prehistoric bird and try to create an interesting feel to it all. So I'm going to zoom out on this just so you can see that the feel of it and you see how it's starting to to fill in and have a little bit of a cool little feather type of, uh, I don't know, I don't even know, like I don't know a lot about birds, like chicken, chicken kind of feel to it. So we'll give this guy a great big huge uh, crown on his head in a second here, but rather than being the... Uh, the kind that you'd find on a rooster or something like that, we're going to do it with hair. And so we're going to pull a whole pile of this colors um, off his body to give him just a real weird look at the very end. And so until then, all I'm going to do is finish filling in the body here with a little bit of a pattern, a little bit of an effect that will run down this rooster kind of chicken thing. So as I pull this color, so you can see how it's starting to all, all blend together and have a little bit of a pattern. And it all sort of blends together as it goes along. Oh, you need a little bit of this darker color coming in here for sure. So as I pull these colors using a 30 width on my pull tool, I can start to blend some of these different aspects of the body together and pull some of the different colors so you get some very cool um, colors starting to appear because it's more than one color blending together. And I love the way it it, uh, it splits up. 
and that's one of the reasons why I do a, a fair number of these drawings. Just it's also the program that I use to draw to do this is called Corel Draw, and so Corel Draw is one that allows me to draw on the computer using my mouse. And I don't do a lot of detailed work, but I do these very um, abstract type of drawings uh, using Corel Draw, and it tends to work out really nice. And it's also one that I, that I can do on Facebook Live so uh, people get a chance to see how I go about creating some of the weird type of drawings that you pull together. Thanks for the thumbs up and stuff, you guys. I appreciate that, Debbie. And uh, Jenna, it... Uh, I'm learning more and more about how uh, how this Corel Draw and Facebook works, and how this Facebook Live works. And so, yesterday I figured out a way that I can actually pull this stuff then and um, put it onto YouTube. And so I put my the one I did yesterday. I drew a, a drawing of a magic forest really quickly, and from that I took that and I put that onto uh, onto YouTube. And so now it's on there, so people can watch it through that medium as well and through that social network. So now I'm just waiting to see what sort of response I get from people on that. So total different crowds. I have a, I have a group of artists that I follow as well um, on a couple of the social media sites. And so it's always interesting to hear from other artists how they, uh, I figure I take hours to spend time creating these these silly little drawings. And if you were, if I was to do them with paint, I would be going through tons and tons of paint, obviously, because this is um, it's just slow the way it comes together sometimes. And if you're smudging paint like this, um, it would dry on you, and you'd have all sorts of problems. Where here on the the computer. There's no mess, which my wife appreciates, and uh, there's nothing to clean up afterwards. I shut her down, and I'm done. I'm not cleaning brushes, cleaning, uh, trying to get the different paint colors out of my brush and all that other stuff. It's just throwing away my palette afterwards after I used $14,000 worth of paint. This one here, I just, there's the cost of the computer. Now, as I've told people, I've got a water-cooled, Alienware computer, which is a really big gaming machine, but I do very little gaming. I uh, I spent all the money on the computer because it has to be fast enough to be able to stay ahead of the the blending of all the colors. blending of all the colors and the, you can every so often you'll hear my computer fire up and you'll hear this um, it almost sounds like a jet engine starting up as the, the colors start to blend and it's, it's trying to stay ahead of all the, the blending and all the reframing of this this stuff as I pull it and so it takes a half decent computer to make this work but I've also done it on a, some school computers it just sometimes you have to save it and wait for it to render, and it doesn't come together as fast as you would like it to. But that's just part of the, the fun of drawing them, is that it takes some time, and you get to relax a little bit. So I've spent a, a fair amount of money on my computer's programs, and on my computer so that I don't have to wait. So now it's caught back up again, so you can hear the the radiator on my computer slow down. So this is going to be the other leg, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those. Like I would, uh, if I was planning on doing a really good job on this, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time creating the, the feeling on the legs and trying to make it a little bit more identifiable as that. For tonight's purposes, I'll just quickly put this stuff together so you can see. Um, 
how it's how it all comes together as a as its own little strange little animal. Okay, now what I really like about these things is that it, you can see how it comes together. How it just it's sort of there, and it's like that's a very bizarre looking thing. But now it even gets worse because now we're going to go down to about a ten, and I'm going to um, make it hairy. So this animal is suddenly going to become hairy. So let's start with a 20. And what you want to do is you just want to take a color and pull it. So there's a big long hair hanging off this bird's head. And there's another one. And a different color. And how about this one? Another one. And another one. Okay, so there's some light, but it's too light. So let's go back up to 30 and pull some heavy ones in first, and I can do some light one, lighter ones later. This pterodactyl type bird is getting all carried away here. Ew. Ew. I need some bolder colors in here. So let's put a few black, a little bit of black in here just to give me something to pull to give it some darker colors. Okay, now let's go in there and start with this. pushing it again because these are the I'm drawing these really fast and so you can see I'm starting to pull up fairly quickly from the from the body but you can hear my machine is struggling to stay ahead of all the different blends in this the quick drawing of these weird feather shapes off at the top of his head Now, if you saw one of these running through the woods, would you hang around or would you get out of there? I ask that question a lot. Like the one, the face I was doing the other day, I asked the same question about the face. So I would always draw these little sinister guys for some reason. I don't know if this guy's so much sinister as just a kind of a bizarre kind of prehistoric chicken. Prehistoric chicken. So now let's just back out of this a little bit and see how that looks. <laughs> I like them. And we'll pull. Let's pull a few hairs from down here. Just so it's more of like a, his, this is his tail. And so we'll pull some of this blue across the top.
Keep up with me, computer. I'm still moving. I'm moving quick here, buddy. Come on. Ooh la la. I like the feel of your feathers. Now, if that ain't a strange bird, I don't know what is. You don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I kind of have the, the feel of what I was trying for. I'm going to go up and I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to soften it just a little bit with a soft little bubble. So some of this uh, just softens up some of this darker, the sharper edges on it. Sort of gives it some substance in the background. But I kind of like them. And you don't want to overdo it too much because if you overdo them, they uh, it tends to get too... too much of a good thing. Ruins the picture in the end, so... And that's what I'm getting close to there is getting to the point where it's overdoing it. So you got your claws on the bottom here. You got your eye up top. You got your little bit of a beak hanging out. A little bit of your beak hanging out there. Hair coming off the back here. know you're getting close to creating the effect you want when you, it kind of makes you giggle. Now, The Hairy Bird by Dr. Seuss. Is Dr. Seuss still alive? If he was, I'd love to do some of the artwork for his books. There you go, Dr. Seuss. Write a book about the hairy bird. Just don't expect me to draw the same one twice, because I have no idea how to get there. And the last thing you always do is put yourself a little signature right here that says D. C and you got yourself a weird bird. Hope you enjoyed the process. And I'll hopefully I'll see you guys again sometime when I'm drawn on the computer. Talk to you later. Bye bye.